Hello everyone, I'm James Milan. Welcome to this episode of Talk of the Town. Uh, today I am talking to my guest, I guess today really, is uh, Carla Sodeyama. Sodeyama. Um, and Carla is the director of the WIC program. Have you heard of the WIC program? WIC, W-I-C, stands for Women, Infant, and Children. And I bet you have, maybe on the federal level, heard something about it. Today we're going to find out uh, from Carla, what is going on, what services are provided, what WIC does in and around Cambridge, Somerville, and now Arlington as well, um, and specifically what services are going to be most pertinent for Arlington residents. So glad you've tuned in, and let me first say thank you very much, Carla, for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, we really do appreciate you taking the time to come in and just tell us stuff that we don't yet know. Um, especially because what you are, what the program is all about, of course, is helping segments of the population, uh, you know, providing assistance to people who we all uh, agree and support the provision of services ar around. Um, so we'll get to that in a minute, but let me ask you first, if you don't mind, just to share a little bit about your own history, um, both with the program and, you know, in your work generally. How long have you been at this? what brought you to it, et cetera. Um, so I started, my background is a nutritionist. So I started as a nutritionist in um, 2001, November. And I stayed uh, for that for about 12, 13 years. Then I stepped up as the supervisor of the nutrition service within the program, supervising mm -hmm. our nutritionists and continue providing services in the community directly. And past 2021 March, that's when the opportunity came and I become the director of the Cambridge Somerville Week, which serves Arlington, Watertown and Bedford included. Okay, so Arlington, Watertown, Bedford as well as Cambridge and Somerville. That's yes. our first piece of pertinent information that we, we, we now know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so just tell us a little bit about, well, what brought you to this work though? So, well, nutrition, mm -hmm, basically, mm -hmm. but I feel like what made me stay all these years is my passion for breastfeeding. Uh, I'm a mother myself, and even um, during my school years, I worked at uh, Milk Bank. That's what I liked the most, besides all the other possibilities in my career. And I always had that um, in my mind, like really breastfeeding was my goal to pursue and I'm fortunate enough that, you know, WIC includes both services in one. Mm -hmm. So this is definitely what made me stay. Another piece of that is um, when you become a mother, then you make the extra level connection with, you know, the this part of my job. And I really enjoy helping other moms to reach their goals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So let's talk a little bit about WIC, the program mm -hmm. itself, because you've already alluded to a couple of the things, breastfeeding and nutrition, uh, that are right at the heart of what it is that you do. But tell us about the program, including a little bit of historical background, if you don't yeah. mind. So, yeah, so WIC um, started basically information from mom to mom, like really women helping other women, you know, with nutrition of uh, their kids. And that's the whole idea, the information itself. So we are very a different program from SNAP and other resources uh, because our intention is to inform about nutrition and breastfeeding for mothers, parents, caregivers, take the, you know, their consideration into the information and use to best help um, in the nutrition of their family. Mm -hmm. We do provide um, a card with some foods, but it does not not provide what is necessary for the whole month. We are the supplemental program. Mm -hmm. um, we don't look at the whole family to see what they need, but we give a certain amount per family, per child or mother, in the hopes that the nutrition and the breastfeed information is used the most to help the whole family to reach their um, nutrition status, like a better health and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so besides nutrition information and support with breastfeeding, we do have um, four peer counselors in the community. So they help the mothers and connect mothers with um, international um, lactation consults to in, in the case of high risk, if they need more support. Um, we, our main uh, 
activity too is um, referrals for other services in the community. So mm -hmm. since from the beginning of the program, when a person apply to the inn, so since we have to see income, if there is anything in the community that that family can apply to. So for example, she shows a bill, um, do you have discount, you know, for mm -hmm. fuel assistance or gas or internet discount and all that is done right up front. And then from the nutrition side, you know, when they ask about foods and what's going on, then we do referrals to connect them with other resources of food too, seeing that mm -hmm. ours might not be enough. So it's a whole making sure the families know what is available in the community to better serve them. Right, and I guess what you're saying is that, and it makes a lot of sense, of course, that in the provision of so social services like this, you are coordinating with and also kind of working, collaborating with, in a sense, a lot of other kinds of services providers who are dealing with other aspects of the lives or challenges of the people that you're working with. Is yes. that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, we even use the same screening tools as the pediatrician in our areas too. So everyone is speaking the same language and we all, you know, screening everyone the same. Mm -hmm. And who are the people who are kind of most likely to be, to, to benefit from the services that you provide? Or who are the people who are re reaching out to you? Is it just all new, is it just new mothers generally or... Tell, tell us a little bit about the populations that you that you serve most. Yeah, so usually uh, we serve low-income families. Um, the ones that reach us out um, easily are the mothers that already had other kids. So mm -hmm. those are the ones that come easily because they already know about the program. Um, the one referral that works the most is the word of mouth, we call it, mother to mother. So mm -hmm. because they already talked to the other mother explaining most of the service, so they will come. But we have direct um, referrals through the hospital that we work from, which is um, Cambridge uh, Hospital. Mm -hmm. So internally, if uh, it's a new, new mom and she doesn't know, the nurses are there asking them and referring them direct to us as if any other hospital do the same. Mm -hmm. So the new, new moms comes when they find out they're pregnant uh, from um, hospital and providers because mm -hmm. they might not have, you know, um, talked to anyone yet. Um, those are the ones that come in. Um, some families that move it into the community, situation change within their family. So a friend might say, you know, now that this have changed in your, you know, mm -hmm. um, divorce or any other issues that might happen. So then word of mouth again is the powerful one. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. it comes first and they really get to us that way. We do have other community services, which is um, Head Start, Early Head Start, that we work together too. Mm -hmm. So they, when they see families, they ask about the service and vice versa, which you refer to them. So that way we can help. Yeah, it sounds like it's you know really effective to have this kind of cross-pollination of ways in which people can come under this umbrella, but once they come in through a WIC program, through uh, a, diff a different program, um, a Head Start or whatever, then they are going to be made aware of this kind of broad range of services that they have access to. Yeah, and even especially because if you focus in one special thing, you might not reach everyone. Mm -hmm. And when I feel like the hardest situations that happen in life that, you know, it's the hardest one to figure it out. You think about so many things and you might not think about a program that can help you with emergency food right away. So we try our best to be in the community, either food pantries or, you know, many other places that serve food directly. Uh huh. And um, you, you mentioned that you serve large, uh, basically a low income population. Is that, so there is a income qualification as part of it? Yes. Yes. So um, one, if a person has, for example, mass health, and I know mass health, we have various kinds of mm -hmm. in types, but the standard mass health that we call, uh, their, love, their income level is lower than ours, so the person is um, automatically kind eligible, of eligible for eligible. the program. So that is the easy one, but that's what I mentioned. Like, don't just because you don't have that type, don't say always can call us and we can screen because there right. are other. Yeah. Right. You'd rather. Right. You'd rather. So, so let's 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 make this very clear. Right. We want to give the message out to folks that if they have any questions about whether they might qualify in terms of income or otherwise, it's worth 
not just simply deciding, oh, it's probably not gonna, it's not, not gonna work out. Instead, reach out, and if you, in, if in fact they don't qualify for whatever reason for your specific program, you may well have ideas or other directions in which to send them. Yes, because even if they don't qualify, but sometimes they have a condition that is happening, that we can even make the referral anyways. You know, we can give them extra information. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that we just opened for the community um, serving our hospitals and any community that we serve is just the hospital doing COVID. They couldn't keep up with their breastfeeding classes. So we have four peer counselors, we kind of train them, and now they're providing classes in English, Spanish, and Portuguese um, for the whole community. So even if you call us and you are a new mom and you don't qualify for the program, at least you can participate on the class no matter what. We mm -hmm. can get your email and sign you up right away. So that's one thing for sure. And then many other things that we might find out, you know, that it can serve um, WIC participants and non-WIC participants. You know, one thing that I'm struck by in just what you've said already is that it seems to me like you've, you, you're in a good situation in terms of getting the word out to the people who need to know what it is that you provide. And the reason I think that is because, as you've said, you have mothers who've already been in the program, and so if they have, you know, as they are having more children, they're already aware of things. They're also talking to other new mo mothers. And then you mentioned that Cambridge Hospital, I'm sure, every hospital in which, uh, you know, women are delivering babies, uh, there, they, there would be that information available there too. Is that how it feels? So to me, that looks like, oh, that's quite robust. You're really finding those populations. I suspect maybe not though, right? It's oh, well, a lot of things, imp see, COVID made a lot of things improved in a certain way, and that is the big difference. So before COVID, um, no. We were, it was really hard. Some people would not mention WIC, um, probably because the economic situation then, um, the foods that we provided, uh, um, the amount of fruits and vegetables that we had, our package changed mm -hmm. over this past few mm. years. So um, the value, we were giving like $11 for fruits and vegetables compared to right now, a child would have received 25 and a prenatal mom would receive you know, over, uh, over what over what period of time? Like 11? the COVID, like because of the whole situation right. and the impact. So we got um, money, you know, to improve right. and mm -hmm. increase the value of the cash benefits. That's what we say. OK, so, but I'm just sorry. I'm just trying to get a sense of the eleven dollars that you mentioned before that has, you know, now moved, bumped up to a higher figure. What is that? Is that for fruits and vegetables for a week, for a day, for a... That's for a month. <laughs> for a month. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. So just and, to give and people a yeah, sense Yeah, and of, that's per person in your family. So which, if you have a child and a mom that is pregnant, they are both receiving that, mm -hmm. but it's it's per month. Okay. Yes. So in the past, before COVID, we, we were having difficulties to reach out to people, and we don't know. Um, maybe it was the value where people didn't know once COVID hit, we were able to use the technology, mm -hmm. you know, so um, many other resources that made us available uh, on their hands, on their phone. Um, so people could call us, you know, and have the information via using more WhatsApp, using more uh, text message. Mm -hmm. So and receiving services over the phone made everything easier. Uh, transportation to not having to come to the office made people realize and uh, the condition you know people need more of the resources at right. that time so it changed but we still see a percentage of moms coming towards the end of the pregnancy versus the beginning of the pregnancy mm -hmm. not as before so we switch we had um, about um, 48 to 50 something percent coming at the end of their pregnancy and now we have only like 30, 28 mm -hmm. percent coming at the end of the pregnancy. So we still try to reach more sooner than later, mm -hmm. but um, uh, we still have to keep, you know, informing people. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting what you said, of course, that's very familiar to anybody who has lived through these last three and a half years. Um, but the the ways in which the pandemic both, you know, caused innumerable, you know, uh, hassles and, and, and et cetera, it also was a real boon and real opportunity to expand access. Mm -hmm. 
we, for instance, as a television station, we found that we needed to be able to uh, help our town to take the, thing, the things that mattered most, whether they were, they were government meetings, public forums, et cetera, and there needed to be a way to disseminate that information to people who were stuck in their homes. Yes. And so we found that we had a, a real vital role to play, but it also meant that as COVID tailed off, we were able to continue to make use of those technologies that had helped us to reach a broader audience. I, I imagine you have a similar experience. Yes, uh, so that's another step that we're taking. Um, the government just gave some grants for innovations in WIC. So things that are here, some of them are staying and not, you know, going back. We're mm -hmm. moving forward and some other technology that works. So um, in the future, like right now, when our waivers will expire as of July, um, so August 1st, we'll start in-person service, which has been happening already. Um, people will have the flexibility of some video appointments, you know, continue, some phone appointments continue, and the in-person appointment, and the online appointment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, again, it, our local government, for instance, is now offering most of their meetings, or many of their meetings, uh, you can attend in person, or it, th these are hybrid presentations, right? You can attend them in person, or you can tune in to them uh, in, in another way. It has just increased the number, uh, the, the number of choices that people have about how to get that information. And I guess, again, the same thing is true for you, where you created this uh, option for your clients to be able to do everything remotely. I imagine that even as many of us have been very glad to get back into the in-person uh, work environments that we are in again, that there's probably a lot of people who are making use of your services who are who feel most comfortable staying remote. Is, is that, is that yes. the case? Yes, so there are a lot of um, moms with kids that, you know, <laughs> schedule when life happens where it's easier for them to continue the services remotely. And then we just have to coordinate a few things to make sure we have the best um, information on that child so we can do a full assessment for the nutrition and health. So what are the advantages, like you, you're saying that uh, basically coming into the clinic is now an op, you know, has been an option for a while, uh, but it, you want to make sure that people understand that that's an option. What are the advantages to doing so? So coming to the clinic, you have an in-person visit, you're going to be able to see a nutritionist. We're going to measure the kid, you know, ourselves. So it's um, done right there precisely. And um, unless you have the information from the doctor a recent visit, I would definitely recommend going, especially if the mother has concerns about, you know, developing or mm -hmm. um, weighing that, and that kid. For new clients, for if you're registering for the first time, the best advantage is you get your WIC card right away, hand. Mm -hmm. So you can use your benefits sometimes on the same day. If you, ha if you came in at 8 o'clock in the morning and everything was approved, on that same day you can go shopping. Versus if we do everything remotely, we will have to mail that to you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a short period of <laughs> wait, but sometimes can take a little bit longer. As we all know, for yeah. thing, as we all know about things we've waited for in the mail, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So the, that WIC card that you were just mentioning, that somebody for, who is a first-time registrant can get as they leave the office and then make use of right away. What does that specifically? What does that enable them to so do? So we, so the electronic card is where we add like all the food, so mm -hmm. the cash value mm -hmm. plus all the items that they re receive, like milk, cheese, eggs, mm -hmm. and all the other that makes the full package, you know, that they receive on WIC. And they have, sure, they have uh, a period of 30 days to use that. It's, um, mm -hmm. you know, so it does have time for them to receive at home if we have to mail. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's the foods. It's one card per family. So if a family have like three individuals, it's still all in one card. It's the same, um, the PO uh, S machine that you use to pay at the store mm -hmm. with your credit card mm -hmm. is the same uh, place that you use your WIC card. Mm -hmm. um, the, and if a client, for example, has a SNAP, uh, we just make sure, like, use your WIC benefit first because WIC only pays for certain items and certain 
foods mm. and then you use your snap because if you use reverse the snap will not pay for everything and then you have to come back and use WIC but this is what um, that card and what are the items that WIC uh, will you know what are the categories so I guess? we provide milk cheese eggs um, peanut butter or dry beans whole grains uh, juice and fruits and vegetables which is the cash Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So everything is an item in, inside the package. So a person has to buy that item and will deduct from the total. Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't have to uh, think about the amount or the value. It's just the fruits and vegetables, a certain value. So you shop and it comes out. And then if at the end you spend more, then you just pay the difference for that. Mm -hmm. Everything else is an item. Once you use it, it's out of your card. It's basically so if you have a big store around you, you know, then mm -hmm. um, it, it's going to cost a certain amount. But if you live in a community, there's a, like a small corner store and the price is a little bit different. You don't have to worry about it. as long as you bought those items. It's wow. paid for. OK, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting a better idea. I just want to make sure that I ha have the right idea. And that is for the items that you mentioned, for the eggs and the milk and cheese and things like that, they can that is basically an item and it doesn't matter how much it costs they just get to get that item mm -hmm. or that number of items yes um and then there is a separate another category as in fruits and vegetables where you can provide them with a certain amount of money that they can spend on those on the, that category of foods and they can do that wherever they'd like but once that money runs out, then they're providing, then, then they're paying for the rest themselves. Yes. And it's everything electronically. So they have an app on their phone that tells them uh, the food list and what they can or cannot buy. Because mm -hmm. uh, probably in the store now, if you never notice, now you're going to notice when you mm -hmm. go on the milk aisle or, no, or the bread aisle, there are some items that have our WIC logo right by the price that means is WIC approved and they can scan with their phone using the app just to see if it's WIC approved or not mm -hmm. so it we are pretty electronic now mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then as soon as they shop it will give them uh, a paper copy of what is left to, to shop and they can look at the app and it right away shows mm -hmm. in there mm -hmm. and until what date so usually um, if you haven't spent your, your items one week before it expires, it tells you yep. you have one week to buy your food, you know, and things like that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it does. It, yeah, it feels like these, these are serious advances in mm -hmm. terms of people, in terms of convenience for people, in terms of basically helping them. I, I think you must have many years of experience, the WIC program, and you personally, of course, with just how crazy, busy, and uh, and distractible the lives of the women who you are w working with are. And so anything that helps them just gives them a nudge, it gives them a reminder, et cetera, as the kids are running around and making all kinds of noise, et cetera, is going to be very, very helpful, I would think, for them. Yeah. In this situation that we are, Massachusetts, too, it has the advantage of technology we improved some states are not, and mm. we were fortunate enough to be able to have everything on a card. So when we had to, you know, change services the way we provide, we already had all mm -hmm. in a card and what is easy to, you know, continue to provide services over the phone. So you were just mentioning how Massachusetts has some advantages compared to some other places in that way. Is, is, is the WIC program you know, I mentioned at the outset, people might have heard about it on the federal level. What I'm thinking of is just, in general, WIC is one of those programs that is mentioned when we're talking about the, the, the SNAPs and the other kinds of uh, federal or government assistance mm -hmm. programs. Um, but the WIC program, is, is that a state program, state by state program? Is it even more local than that? Or is it a federal program? It's a federal program. Okay. So that's where we see them. But we in Massachusetts has the support of the state. And that's what it makes a difference. And the same in all the other states. Mm -hmm. So we all receive um, the federal money. And mm -hmm. then depending on the state, you know, you have more support to help improve a few things here mm -hmm. and there. That's that's the difference, but we are in all the states. You were mentioning that, uh, that y some of the programs that you've been able to innovate in these last few years have been, were funded by government, you know, by government money that was specifically uh, about the pandemic, ARPA funds and other kinds of funds, I assume that you had access to. Those funds for lots of organizations and towns and municipalities, frankly, are starting to 
to dissipate now because the spigots have been turned off. Are you, how, how are you feeling about you know, your work and the programs that you provide as you're looking at the next year, two years, five years, et cetera? So again, because we, are, we have the state support, we do not have a waiting list. So we continue to provide service to anyone that is eligible at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, our funds for COVID was just to support the how we were um, working, you know, like extra computer for people that needed to work from home because we couldn't carry mm -hmm. our computers mm -hmm. in the office and things like that. So that is not going to affect us. And I, I see. Think, so yes. it's all it was all about kind of infrastructure and administrative yeah. expenses and things like that. And a few changes that were made just got, a, you know, uh, went up for vote and um, National Week Association and all the other states, you know, made proposals and they are reviewing things. So we are going to continue, but it's already embedded in our um, normal funding now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we only have a couple of minutes left. I want to make sure that uh, you can speak straight to our Arlington audience uh, about what it is that you would like to make sure that they know that we don't we don't stop taping before you're able to let folks know. Well, I really wanted to make sure everyone knows that we do have an Arlington WIC office located um, at 7 Central Street in Arlington. Uh, is Suite 170. We are there every Tuesday from 10 to 6.30. You are welcome to walk in. We are doing in-person services and over the phone. Um, starting August 1st, um, if you're registering for the first time, most likely we would ask you to come in person. So it's a, um, our state, you know, put in that recommendation to serve you better. Sure, if there's any adjustment, but we are open, providing services, you know, every Tuesday, and um, anyone in the community. So WIC is not related to, like, you live here, you have to use. But if you work yeah. here, you are in the area, or you use providers in the area, you're more than welcome to continue use, uh, to come and use our Arlington service. One thing that it's coming up, it's farmer's markets. So during the farmer's markets month, we do provide WIC vouchers where they get extra uh, vouchers to use at the farmer's market and we were at the Arlington farmer's market twice last year so we are hoping that to set up that date soon so we'll be distributing vouchers to at the farmer's market. We um, send communication so if you are registered already you receive communication right on your phone where all of this is happening but if you're a new person that's when you have to reach out. Okay wonderful information that and great way to end up so we'll, we'll, we'll see you at the farmer's market and also, we'll just remind people it's Tuesday, basically all day, mm -hmm. um, business, normal business hours on a Tuesday, and it's cent 7 Central Street, mm -hmm. yes. is that right? And we know that that's across Mass Ave from the town hall, basically, and back back in that area, just to give people a general idea. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, I just want to, again, reiterate what you said. If you work here rather than live here, you also can access that, that, that office and its services. Yes. Wonderful. Um, hopefully the timer will get turned off and we'll just finish up, great, by saying that I've been speaking with Carla so Sodeyama. Sorry to bleh, no, stumble over your last name. Carla me. Sodeyama has joined us. She is the director of the WIC program in the Cambridge, Somerville, Arlington, Watertown, and Bedford. Bedford. There yeah. we go. I had almost forgotten. Um, it, uh, among those various cities, the WIC program that she's just described. So Carla, again, one more time, thanks for joining us and sharing this really great information. Again. We appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate Carla's time. We appreciate your time as well. This has been Talk of the Town. I'm James Milan. We'll see you next time.